If I like chat GPT, can we have chat GPT read out a prediction of this game? Yeah, do it. Do it while I'm getting the intro going. Should I just feed it Ken Palm stats? I don't that's know if that's interesting or that's not. That's basically just recreating Ken Palm's algo. So, like, I don't know that that's... That's true. Gonna... I don't want to do that anymore. Big algo guy. Respect the algo. Mike, happy Selection Sunday, man. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you every day, but especially on Selection Sunday. No better time to see that smile. You're feeling face. good, huh? I'm feeling That's really good. I, and we got a special guest with us today. Close personal hmm. friend of mine. He is the uh, creator of Prison Mitch before that other guy uh, basically said that he wishes Tom Brady would have died instead of Kobe Bryant. That was not Kevin. That was another guy. I didn't guy. run that account. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> didn't what run the, the account. What are you t- what do you? I vaguely remember this, but like that—that's your lead. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure when I say prison, Mitch, people don't think that like oh. he's the guy who made a crass joke about Tom Brady dying. Got it, got it, got it. It's it's different... A lot of stuff. I would never say anything like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you're the good prison, Mitch creator. Yeah, yes. just the uh, intellectual property guy. That's it. I didn't. I didn't do anything in operations. So, and I just only wanted to say that at the front to give. Kevin some credibility in case anyone's wondering like, hey, why are you guys bringing another guy on? Because this is the second Kevin we've had on. Kevin Meckley of Jayhawk Talk, also a friend of the show. Now Kevin Tehan, friend of mine, now is a friend of yours, friend of the show for a little Selection Sunday episode of Could Be Wrong. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. And uh, join us next week when we have Kevin McCuller on. And, and, and I could be wrong. You guys could do, look at this. And I, I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong. And I could be wrong. I, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. You'd have to ask him. But Kevin McCuller is on next week. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for Kansas? If he's well, on we could send a, We could send a media request in. Right. You know, this or would be the time of year to do it. something horrible could happen, and he wants to choose us as his platform to speak. I have a hard time believing that if Kevin McCuller needed to, like, speak out and be a whistleblower on something, that we are the platform. I don't what know. If what, what else? What if he gets... It, what if he feels the need to defend himself? And he's going to do it with us? Yeah, Wouldn't you? Like, I got something. I got something to get off my chest. Yeah, like, <laughs> specifically... Be wrong was the place to do it. <laughs> well, Nick, you had the tweet. to me. You had the, fa- Which you had tweet? the famous McCuller tweet when you were maybe a little buzzed. And woke up and you were like, whoa, everyone's angry at me on Twitter. So you have a history with him. Uh, also, should I text Kevin Meckley to come on? Because I could do that right now. Every Kevin. Let's get every okay. Kevin that right, we know. I'll do that. Kevin Young. Oh, Kevin, Kevin Young, Young might actually. Kevin Young would do it. Could yeah, I, tweet I think him? he would too. All yeah, right, tweet I got Kevin this. Young and see what he's doing right now. You know, because I want to say one thing about the Kevin McCuller tweet. I got absolutely crushed for that. But the more time has went on, the more correct that take has become. So share share the gin, the gist of the cha- gist of the take, and it plays into something that Bill Self said today here on Sunday, Selection Sunday, that I think is going to be irrelevant. So we're, we're okay. leading with it right now. But first, the gist okay. of the take you're talking about. And apologies to anyone who's already heard this story or just doesn't care. But this was in, it was when KU had beaten Baylor and Kevin McCuller didn't play. So this is hours after the game. I am out. I had been out drinking all day. And for some reason, even though the game was no longer fresh on my mind, Kevin McCuller's status was. And I just decided to unveil a take. I think that's when I texted Kevin in our group chat and I was like, yeah, I don't really like this guy. It was like a soft launch. I wanted to see how it was going to be received by people I trusted. And I think I probably texted you too, Mike. I was like, I don't really like this did. guy. He's kind of soft. He's kind of whiny. I just don't really like his... I don't like the cut of his gym. You know? He's just not my kind of guy. He's not a Kansas guy, I think was one of the takes. And so I tweeted that out. Got absolutely roasted. And then I dug myself a deeper hole when people are like, what are you talking about? He's our best player or one of our best players. And I said, yeah, no, he's a good player. I just don't like his personality. <laughs> Which is <laughs> it's never like a take that people are like, okay, I get that. No, that's reasonable. That's fair. It's your right. It's your right to hate him. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I, I think the way people talk about college players is always weird. Like, you can't do that. But at this point, he's been in college for a really long time, and he's getting paid a lot of money to be here. And, like, you didn't say he was bad. You said he's not really your taste. And like, Which I think is the better I, thing to say. It's not that bad. 
Right. Well, and you I, didn't, I, agree. I hated it. I hated it, Nick. You know <laughs> Did that. You? I thought, oh, yeah, I was like, what? I was like, he's so he's so tough. He's developed into a 20-point-a-game guy. He's an absolute dog. Like, how do you – it's blasphemous at first. But then some time passed, and it's been very kind to you, Nick. It has. And granted, like, I stand by the original sentiment. I was never saying, like – this team's better without him or I don't want to see him play because as we saw last week for Cincinnati, uh, without Kevin McCuller and Hunter Dickinson on this court, this team is bad. They're a bad basketball team without them. So that is probably Mm. a good transition into where KU currently stands with those two guys because Bill Self, I believe, provided an update on their status today after the brackets were released. Do you have the quote, Andy Mike? Yes. Tweeted from the great Brian Haney. Nicest guy in Kansas. Uh, Brian tweeted uh, the Bill Self quote. Quote, Hunt's doing great. He practiced the last two days non-contact. So we've been, so we've done all dry stuff. Huh. But he'll do contact tomorrow. (laughs) Kevin, I haven't seen yet. But the plan all along was to start practicing him on Monday. If he can't go tomorrow, we'll try to practice him Tuesday. He hasn't seen Kevin. That's the, that was the end of the quote. He hasn't seen Kevin. Hunt's doing great. Haven't seen Kevin. He's not even What's in going the training room? What's your reaction to this? <laughs> What's your, what is your reaction to this? Have you seen the quote? No, I had not seen the quote. Hearing it I feel like I feel like you should just get off your chest what you're thinking. Because I can tell there's something bubbling up I in don't that brain like of yours. You... That magnificent brain of yours. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, like a... Beautiful, yeah. Um, so, well, I think what Self said is is very, very, very true and transparent. Like, my understanding is that things are on track. The plan was for Hunter to go non-contact. Like, all of this sounds like things are on track. Uh, it's I just am catching, like, still remnants of frustration for the way McCullough's last month or so has gone. Where where he's saying I haven't seen him yet. The plan if he's still on plan, like it's a little strange to say that. I, I think KU like truly doesn't know. I think they expect him to be able to go, but self doesn't know if he can. So they expect it. They don't know. And I think there's there's just been some lingering frustration. That's really it. Like and and I think the summary of it is this idea that you know he's super tough and like maybe maybe i'm wrong but he's been dealing with like hampering injuries his two years here kind of when the going gets tough i don't i just don't think he's that tough i guess like that's what it is Hmm. like how bad am i to say that he's not that tough i'm not saying he's like the opposite either i'm just saying he's not like yeah but you are though he's soft you're saying he's soft and that's the tldr okay it doesn't have to be like or soft it doesn't have to be like there can be nuance. It doesn't have to be hard or soft, hard or soft. You can have that like middle area. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can. Well, I yeah, found no. I, I disagree. I hard disagree is better. because I no. I found that if you're not hard, you might you're as well soft. Just be soft. You, yeah, it doesn't matter because if you're not hard, you're just you're soft. You're useless. Um, it's shocking to me. Especially based <laughs> off of the <laughs> pull together. Good. Come on, come on. It's it's <laughs> shocking to me that based off the comments last week, in which Bill Self spoke with a good amount of confidence that both of these guys were going to be ready to go for the tournament, and that this guy has not sustained any new injuries. Had a bone bruise. He played. Oh, he banged it up. Then he sat out some more. Then he came back. And then he banged it up again. And now it's you had a whole week off, and we're still sitting here ahead of the NCAA tournament, and we don't know if the second best player is going to be able to go. Like your game's in three days, Arguably and we have the no most idea. Important. Yeah, yeah. Some would say he's gonna. I my gut is that he's gonna play. But like, do we really need to to have this kind of drama to go along with it? I don't know. I'm I'd agitated. say no, personally. Personally, I'm, I'm out on the drama. And it's like it's not even a question of like if he'll be good if he plays. He came back against Baylor, and I know KU lost, but I think he had 20 points in that game. 
So that's what's, that's what's most frustrating is like, well, I know he'll be effective if he plays, but yet I'm sitting here wondering if he's going to be able to play. First time in the history of sport that someone goes from maybe out from the season to playing like 95% of the, sorry, like 95% of the minutes in the next game. Like, doesn't make sense. It do, the math is not mathing on this. What are we doing? How is this still a thing? Is is this not like someone well, I didn't confirmed see the, this is the, the selection committee? The selection committee president Dan Gavitt came out and he made a statement about somebody asked him about like injuries. Are you assuming that these guys are going to be able to go? And he said, "No, we're assuming Hunter Dickinson is going to be available and playing." I didn't say anything about Kevin McCullough. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. This was before the brackets were released. Interesting. Yeah, like Mike, do you know do you know that he's not going to play and you're just not you're not sharing it with us? Cuz if you can yeah. confirm, I'll we can shut our laptops. I'm ready. I'm ready to call it a day. Yeah, I've heard some uh we can t- we can cuss 5 minutes in. We're like past that point, right, Nick? Yeah, Apple you're gets good. mad if you do it in there. I sent the text of the self quote to someone just a fr- a friend uh who's generally a ball knower and his response was just fucking in the season. So, like, <laughs> that's where KU fans are out, are, are at. Here's McCuller. I want to run through it. So, he did not play. This was on January 30th, his first missed game. Comes back, plays 37 minutes, 44 minutes. Did not play, did not play, 35 minutes. Did not play, did not play, 31 minutes, 29 minutes. First half versus Houston, didn't play. Seems normal it's to weird. me. It is, so I no, but I I think he was totally normal. I think he's probably gonna play. Like I'm still there, but we'll start catching wind. I I'm hoping tomorrow on Monday that I'll start probably figuring out what's going on. Uh, up until this point, it seems like they're on track, which is why I'm still like, well, it, I'm sensing agitation. It seems weird. Okay, let's. I want to get into this. Let's get into bracket. the bracket. Let's get into yeah, I want to because I'm sure in the course of this conversation we will be brought back to McCuller and Dickinson and I will be assuming they're playing as of today Sunday night. But less, it seems like you're less certain than you were when we last spoke five days ago. Yeah, because I don't think Ku is certain based on yeah what I'm seeing here. I I'm but they seem, like, but there's the thing they seemed really certain last week. And now they're uncertain, which makes me think they weren't really certain last week. They were Probably just posturing. Not. Probably. Yeah, which which is I thought yeah, they'd be the posturing about Hunter in this one, but it seems like Hunter's on track. Yeah. Okay, uh bracket reveal. KU good. four good, seed good, good. in the Midwest. Nothing really surprising there. Uh overall, I we'll get into the matchup. They're playing Samford, a thirteen seed, um, in the same pot as them, Gonzaga, McNeese State, if they advance to the second round. So what's your guys' overall impressions of KU's draw here in the Midwest? Kevin, what are you feeling? Um, I think it's pretty cool that we have a potential round of 32 matchup against the next KU basketball coach. Wow. That's kind of, that's kind of a unique situation. He is talking about the McNeese State. Yeah, who's, who's McNeese coach? State's coach? You don't know this? Oh, he's, he's, no. he's been high on my list for a long, long time. Will Wade. Uh, Will Wade is... Wait, Will Wade's his, coaching McNeese He took State? his show cause, and he is back. Oh, yeah, and they're awesome. They're good. This dude is... Yeah, he's a really good coach. Like, it would take some real uh, fortitude for KU to hire Will Wade after, after the last NCAA thing, but, like, man, that would be awesome. He's I'm in his board. first year at McNeese State, and they go thirty and three. Yes, because he is. Is this year one? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They went, he didn't coach last year, and he's in year one. They go thirty and three, seventeen and one. Yeah. And double the NCAA, NCAA middle fingers tournament. up. Oh yeah. Will Wade, guy is hot. Has been Hasman. in the tournament since 2002. Unbelievable. Roy Williams was the coach of Kansas the last time that McNeese State went to the NCAA tournament. This is now the Will Wade podcast. Will Wade could could be right podcast. Could be right. Could, could be, be right. right. 
I, it just – it seriously would take fortitude, but yeah, no, he's he's a stud. So, <laughs> I'm, Guys, I'm not going to lie. Like, maybe this is because I have been so down on this team over the last couple of months that, like, my expectations have just gone out the window and I have just been resigned to accept whatever fate is coming this team's way. Kind of love the draw. Kind of love the draw, guys. I to think... get knocked out early? <laughs> no, dude. Okay, I'm, okay. Let's just. I'll just start Do it. it then. Do it. I think KU is going to annihilate Samford in the first round. Like, just absolutely crush these losers' soul and send them back to Birmingham. Like, I don't care that they shoot a lot of threes and make a lot of threes. I don't care that they play fast. I don't care that they're athletic. It's Samford. They suck. KU. Point to prove, Tar. Oh, nobody believes in us. Manufactured motivation. They are going to come out and spank these cats. I mean, you're right. The manufactured motivation is like pretty good. Everyone's freaking out about Sanford. Has KU ever had a first round game where people don't freak out? There have been a few. I guess I would have to go look, but like generally the reaction. They played Texas Southern a couple years ago. Well, I don't think people were shaking chill. in their boots for that one. Is that they were like the highest 16 seed on Ken Palm? <laughs> They're still like 100. Because here's because here's yeah, my yeah. thing. Here's what here's what has, has happened with uh, in the Algo era, as we'll call it, oh. where everybody has access to these advanced analytics, and everybody's immediately hopping on Ken Palm, and within cool. 30 minutes they have succinctly been able to figure out exactly who this team is, despite not having watched them once all season long. It's like, oh, bad matchup. I'm like, how do you know? Oh, you looked at their stats? Okay. Um, who's their best win this year? Get, tell me the best team that Samford has beaten this year in the Southern Conference. Is it Chattanooga? Is it Belmont? Is it Furman, who they beat at Western Carolina? And by the way, like, you want to do Ken Palm? You want to do the Ken Palm scouting report? This is the Ken Palm scouting report. This is the Ken Palm resume. Those are le- legitimately the best teams that Samford has beaten this year. Whoa, 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 so I'm whoa, sorry whoa, whoa, for not whoa, whoa. exactly East believing Tennessee that. East Tennessee State? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So like, come on. What are we doing Ahead of the here? tournament, ahead of the, the bracket reveal, I had some conversations, was like pointed in the direction of like, hey, uh, Athletic teams is what KU wants to avoid. Like, really athletic teams. We're talking Auburn, Florida, Texas A&M. So, like, if we're going big picture, yes. Though, similar conversations I've had since then, it's like, no, it's, this is a pretty tough matchup. Like, it's, it is not an ideal uh, first round, like, 13 seed for Kansas to get. In fact, any, probably any of the other 13 seeds would be better. KU is favored by eight and a half. They're the shortest favorite of the 413 line by a couple, maybe two points. So they're single digi fave. But basically, the, the TLDR on Stanford, Nick, you already had it. Stanford is they shoot a ton of threes. They play really fast. They play like 10 guys. They're the, I think they use, they have the third highest bench minutes in the country. They press quite a bit, they force a ton of steals. And so we're talking like an efficient offense that creates extra possessions and shoots threes. I don't love that like through line. Now, their guards are teeny. Like they got some small dudes. Dewan's like pretty big and long. KU, KJ can generally is going to be like so much more athletic than a four that Sanford is going to face. There's a lot of reasons to be like, mm, this should be all right. So your manufactured motivation is correct. Their, like, non-conference strength of schedule is, like, maybe up there with the worst in the country, 330. They haven't they ain't played nobody. So if we're doing the Sanford thing, like, it, it is tough. I can get further into that. Zooming out a little, which is how you were starting, you get past the, not the best opening round draw. And I'm kind of with you that, like, the things KU needed to avoid – aren't they avoided, which is like the ultra athleticism. And if McNeese state is your more athletic option and, you know, team to play in the second round, 
or you're like tougher of the two. Like, it's not that bad. Purdue, if you got to play a one seed, they're the least athletic of the one seeds. Like, give Bill Self of the week to go against Purdue and Matt Painter. Like, hey, there's a lot of reasons that will be a frustrating matchup too, but like, you're a four seed. You know, you're, this is, this is, you're not going to get a great draw as a four seed. So I think it's reasonable, but the Sanford one is, is a little bit of a, a pucker, a butt pucker for me. You know, I've been very down. This is the worst season of my life. And <laughs> I've only been a fan since 09. Uh, the, oh. the, yeah, you just said that they play a lot of guys. The fact a lot that Sanford of guys plays a lot of dudes. How good guys. can the six through ten guy be at Samford? At, <laughs> at Samford, I know we only play like five and a half players, but I feel better. You're making me start to mm. believe in a Sweet Sixteen. I j- that's all I want is is to yeah. get to the second weekend. I can make the you feel worse if money. you want. I can sure, make you feel worse. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> please. If you want- do you want to go into Sanford? Reasons for optimism, reasons for pessimism. Like Nick, are you? Are we good on the draw and and jump into Sanford? Go deep. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to Sanford. I, I mean, I guess we kind of already did, but yeah, they're top ten in three point shooting percentage. They thirty five percent of their three or their shots are threes, basically, or their points come from threes. Sorry, number three in bench minutes played. <laughs> Number 349 in average height. Hmm. And let me tell you. Little boys. <laughs> they are little boys. Uh, <laughs> there aren't. How many teams are in? There's like 350. So they're one of the shortest there's teams. There's 360. In the I think there's Thank 360. You. So yeah, their point guard is 5'8. Their shooting guard is 6 foot. Uh, so there's two very little, little boys out there. Um, That's kind of funny. That's a pretty funny backcourt. I know. Like, who it's are cute. these it's guys? It's a cute backcourt. They're pressing. They're just running around and shooting threes. They force a ton of steals. So, all right. Back into it. Top 10 in forcing steals. Pretty high mm-hmm. on, like, forcing non-steal turnovers, too, which means that it's just high-pressure defense. Uh, here's where it gets bad. So, I've got Synergy, which is, like, a advanced shot-tracking program and it ranks them in the country and it gi- it gives them a grade here compared to everyone else in the country for their shot types and how they score on these all field goal attempts rating excellent 98th percentile in the country jump shot excellent 99th percentile in the country catch and shoot excellent 99th percentile in the country guarded jump shots excellent 98th percentile in the country unguarded excellent 96 like it's like this all the way through they are one of they're the number four like jump shooting team in the country on efficiency here these guys make shots long threes excellent 98th percentile in the country (laughs) uh, come on that is really Hmm. annoying Nick, what's yes. your reaction to that? Is it just like you're, this is bullshit? Who cares? Yeah, well, because I already started from the standpoint, with, from the conclusion you can of they change suck your and KU's going to watch. No, no, I can't. Now I'm just going to use pieces of information that support my argument and discard the ones that go against it. So I'm going to basically works. discard everything you just said by saying that Samford is Nicholas Timberlake. Nicholas Timberlake <laughs> shot a lot of threes. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Sam Nick Timberlake, Nick- oh, he was a great shooter, right? It's the same logic. It's the same logic. It's like, oh, he shoots a lot and he makes a lot. Oh, man, imagine him at KU. Oh, turns out he sucks ass. So, no, oh I won't imagine. I won't bad. imagine. Like, like what bad. is good. I'm over so, like, playing nice with that one. As it turns out, I know, it's a, I know it's an insane line of thinking, but when you play better teams and better quality of opponents and better coaches – all those cute little strengths that you like to put on your, oh, look at my Ken. Oh, we're sixth in three point attempt percentage. Like, you're saying, have that's... fun doing it against Bill Self. Bill Self has a week to prepare for you. Like, good luck. 
Now, maybe, like, if you, here's, here's where I would say that, like, I would be scared. And this is going to be pretty much my logic the entire tournament. If you're worried about KU winning this game, it's not because of Samford. It's because you watched KU the last two months, and they play like a bad team. They're playing bad basketball right now. So if you're just assuming that, like, that's going to continue, which is, to me, much more reasonable than saying, like, they just don't have the dogs to compete with Samford. It's not it. But I'm if just you just saying think it's like not they're ideal. not, I know, I know. Like right, and like, that's been a problem all year long. Ku has allowed teams to get open looks on the perimeter. Teams have buried Ku from three. Oh, so okay. yeah, like I get it. Like it, it makes sense as to why this would be a bad matchup. I am just going to resign to the fact that like Bill Self has five days to get ready for this team. This is a team who hasn't beaten a top 100 Ken Palm team all year long. Oh, now Ken Palm like, works in your favor. I'm just kidding. Well, mm. if, if we're going to, if we get to use it, then like, yeah, of course, no, I'm going to use, use it. It's it it my argument. It exists. I just, hey. I'm, it's less about, it's less about the opponent and it's more about KU. Like I am more worried about KU beating themselves than I am any one of these teams that they could possibly play in the first weekend. It's, it's like really, 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 really poor man's press Virginia. They're, they're pressed the second most in the country. We're about to go play a press. Like, generally, that bodes well for KU in the tournament. Yeah, it used to. Like, back in the day. Well, Roy we used to hate, Remember pressed. when? UAB. No, do you remember, like, 10 years ago? Anytime somebody would press KU, it's like all the guards forgot how to dribble and pass. Oh, yeah. 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 It was well, so not frustrating. Year, not this year, because we've got the best guards, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're feeling good because El Marco Jackson and Nick Timberlake are, are going against the press. They're going against like guys. These Stanford guys are going to be like, oh, these are guys in our league. I know we want to purge the Cincinnati game from our memory, but El Marco Jackson showed me something with that dunk. You know, when he (laughs) he grows up, yeah, that one play was all I needed to see. I am so in on El Marco. Like, I I think he's about to come alive. This is his month. This is his month. He was not done well against the press this year, for the record. They haven't faced too many, but, like, they haven't done well when they have. Uh, oh, that'll be good. Some reasons for optimism. <laughs> Sanford, 21-0 at home. 8-5 and five away from home. So they're like KU in that regard. <laughs> you got Not any neutral great. court numbers? Neutral no, court? I, got no, I don't have any new cheese ready. Uh, That's because nobody wants to invite Sanford to play in their tournament. <laughs> Well, That's they not. just won their conference tournament, so I would That's assume not they a real... have at least three it's probably wins. played at Sanford, honestly. Don't check that. Let's look. No, uh, it, was definitely... it was played at the Hera yeah. Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina. That is where the uh, Southern Conference Tournament is held. And that's oh, also can... where Sanford plays all their home games. Can we... Actually, I have... Let's do the, let's do the counterpoint, because if we're going to talk about all the things they're good at, we can should I... at least talk about what they're bad at i've got one like i re- want to lead with post up defense they are in the bottom first percentile in how many times they have faced a po- oh i guess their post up defense so how many possessions against them that are post possessions they're in the bottom one percentile uh and their their grade on that defense is below average so like they have just played no post probably also cuz they press a lot but if KU can kind of like control that, seems like they're going to be able to dominate the smallest team inside. That bodes yeah, they're well. They're small. <laughs> they're small, and they don't rebound. They are. Yep. Really, really bad defensive rebounding team. Yeah, but KU is a they really, really bad a offensive well. rebounding team. Yeah. Because they're little. Something's got to give. Something's so got to give. Uh, they also turn the ball over a lot. They get their sh- they get their shit swatted a lot, they get blocked a lot. Um, so they get they turn over the ball. Kevin, come on down. Sure could use that formerly McCuller. Uh, yeah, that that former elite defense. Honestly, at this point, I'd like to see. I'd like to get you some run at the two. Can you? Ball? I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try. You can uh, ball. I'm 33. Kevin. Kevin uh, no, 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 no. Kevin no, was an elite, elite, Kevin was an elite, 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 elite baller. There's another, oh, another oh. Kevin here. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh. Hold on, we got an echo. On, we got an echo. Kevin from Jayhawk Talk has just joined us. I did, I did send a text earlier, like I said I was going to, and he's here. Kevin, 
Do you believe you're either hard or soft? Like that there's no in between? I think that's correct, yeah. Like you're there's no real soft. point in not being if you're not hard, you're soft. Correct. One hundred percent. Wow, so Kevin McCullough is soft. Jayhawk Talk said it. Mike was making the point that with the continued uh, uncertainty about Kevin McCullough's status, that like maybe there's growing belief that he's just not hard. And he's like, but he's not soft. And I was like, well, it sounds like he is, though. Can you be hard but also worried about your NBA potential? Mm. Well, no, because like last year there's... I think there's I get some it. last no, year, I get too. It. You're saying sometimes, like, inside, like, you're you're hard. You want to be hard. But, though, sometimes there's things that you're thinking about, and they kind of take over, and they keep you from being fully hard. That's correct. And sometimes there's medicine for it, but other times there's not. Right. Wait, is it the most hard to to be focused on your NBA future? And, like, that's kind of hard by not playing. Yeah, that's feeding your family. That's... I mean, it's pretty that's hard. tough guy stuff. I, yeah. I do. I will say anytime I send out a tweet about McCuller, I sent one out after the Cincinnati loss and it just said, Kevin Tehan, I stole this from you, by the way. I said, <laughs> I said, Kevin McCuller, arrow, main red claws, imminent. And <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody responded and said, Ignorant, you ignorant, and it's from Lubbock, Texas. Anytime I send out a tweet about Kevin McCuller, there's people from Lubbock, Texas, like trashing me. Okay, I've noticed this. They too. still love him, but they hate him so much. But they loved what he was to them. So you think it's just these are just tech fans? Yes. Yeah. Soft tech fans. Soft tech fans. Hey, soft yes. and confused. <laughs> they're uh, they're. All right, Nick, get us on track. What, yeah. What do you think of what do you think of Cage Draw? I don't hate it. I I'm I'm the more I've looked at it and thought about it, we uh mm -hmm. we talked to some guy uh today from Samford Scoops. Uh see so did you know that, <laughs> that there's a fucking joke? Yeah, no, don't issues there's, there. There's a guy named Samford Scoops out there who is challenging you, Mike. I just want you to know this. There's a guy named Samford Scoops out there who who calls himself the Scoops man. Uh, for Sanford, and we had him on our show. And it's actually me. It's actually you. I was wondering <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, he sounded different. I'm scared. But, but <laughs> are you built? Are you doing a, a little deal where you where you're giving out like uh, uh, franchises now for scoops? <laughs> <laughs> Just doing Five a guys. franchise market for each market. That's smart. Like a bar shark thing. Scoops. Sharks. Hello, sharks. Not terrible. I like this. Sanford is the second school that you've expanded to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, it's totally wide open. Okay, hey, so what, did this, uh, what did this fella yeah, say? Yeah. He said they like to press and they like to shoot and they like to <laughs> shoot immediately. They, they press and they shoot and that's it. And they're tiny. And they're little tiny. They're little tiny people who press so they're <laughs> on 12 deep. That's all that's Kevin, they're... Kevin, did he talk about somebody very important? Acor, Acor? Yeah, we got to get him in foul trouble. That's what he Not recommends. Not small. Yeah, he's like 6'7", right? He's like their tallest guy. 6'9", I believe 227. He called him 6'7". 44% from three? Yeah. yeah we, we, they all are 44% from three, though. Like, it feels like they're all 40% from three guys. That's what uh, that's, he's like. That would be the only thing that scares me is a five-man who's going to drag Hunter out to the perimeter defensively. Like, I don't care. I mean, if the guards want to yeah. shoot, whatever. Bill Self's got four days to game plan for that. But I don't know how you game plan for Hunter Dickinson having to roam the perimeter for 35 minutes. Hunter's going to have 30 points and 30 rebounds in this game. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to eat. I'm starting to get bullish. With and you one said arm. Their point, guard, their point guard's 5'8". You can defend that. Just put your hands up. He can't shoot yes. over that. He's how very small. Thing. How do you shoot when your hands are this, like, this much taller than you? Is he fast? Tell me. That's hey, big. Legacy game for Dewan Harris. Legacy game. <laughs> Samford. First round. First, first round matchup for Samford. <laughs> legacy game for national championship winning point guard. They need him though. This is if this Dewan is a Harris game. This is if a one. Dewan, yeah. If Dewan can't like 
take these guys, it's a real problem. And it's, like I'm, I'm still a Dewan believer. <laughs> uh, they're gonna press. He's way longer and and bigger than both of their their one and their two guard. It's a Dewan game. He should cook these guys. Not yeah, that I've ever seen him know, play. That game, that game versus Cincinnati, where. KJ clearly like rose to the occasion. It was just like, I'm going to have to be one of the guys out here. And obviously it wasn't even close to enough. Dewan didn't have a good game when your two best players are out and you're the longest tenured player on this, on this team. And that was to me, it wasn't like shocking or surprising. Like I wasn't necessarily expecting him to just go off offensively, but I think there was an element of like, Hey, it's your team now. There's no question. It's your team with those two guys off the court. Like you kind of have to lead the charge and, I just came away from that being a little disappointed, and I'm and I'm hopeful that as this team embarks on the NCAA tournament, that we can see him kind of take it to the next gear. Because they, I mean, you're you're a national champion, man. Like you have been a starter for three years now. You were a role player. your freshman. Like it's time. It's time for you to be that dude. If not now, like when? Well, next year. <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the answer true. to that question. <laughs> All right, good take. Maybe that's what he's thinking about. <laughs> I got next year. Yeah, he's like, no, this isn't mine. Uh, yeah, no, w- that was bad. There was no one around him, and like, Dewan needs dudes around him, which should work at Kansas. Uh, that was all time bad. Like Nick Timberlake, un- just unbelievably, like w- the vibes could not be worse. And I just saw that Sanford has a starter at the three who shoots 48% from three. On 100 plus threes, by the way. That's not That's... like on 12, 12 threes. That's 100 plus on the season. I don't want to play them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm looking at some of his games. Like most of these games, he's going like three for three, two for five, three for five, two for two. So yeah, he, I mean, he's wildly efficient, but he's not someone who's going to shoot 12 threes. Maybe against Kansas. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's oh what all God. these teams... <laughs> <laughs> I need to get off this roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, we were, like, going on the positive trend until until this, until Jayhawk Talk came. Are, I feel we? good, too. I feel right. good, too, Kevin. <laughs> you already... <laughs> Kevin, Kevin has written in uh, Sanford in his bracket, and nothing else is written in. Uh, and Nick, you need to refer to Meckley as Jayhawk Talk so we can differentiate. Or Kevin or Kevin is Prison Mitch. Kevin 2.0. Okay. I mean, he could be Kevin yeah. 2.0. That's kind of like the no, better just, version. Just do Jayhawk Talk. Uh, all right, Nick, you're um, a pro. Whatever you want. Okay, uh, Jayhawk Talk. I don't like saying Jayhawk Talk. It's like, it's like I'm talking Dude. to a Twitter account now. You can call me whatever you want. Do, do, do your friends call you Mechley? Uh, mostly Mech. Mech, oh! dude, come on. Where's right this been? <laughs> come on, Mech. All right, Mech. Mech, you mind if I call you Mech? Uh, Mech, I said earlier in the podcast that I think KU is going to annihilate these losers. Like, I think they are going, I think Bill Self, weak, weak to prepare. He is going to fill these dudes' head with, with motivation. Nobody believes in you. You guys are a four seed. Everyone says they're the best 13 seed. Uh, everybody's been counting us out all year. I think they smack these fools. I don't believe I convinced Mike or Kevin to get on board with me, but will you join me? I will join you that they're going to win. I don't know that they're going to win by 53 points like Purdue did against them. Do you uh, think they could perhaps win by eight and a half points? I... Do not, but I think you don't. You won't need to. You can just wait. I have to make a call. Oh, <laughs> to cancel something then. No, wait, now <laughs> it's going to be six and a half by tomorrow. Yeah, you just hold off. Uh, look, I, I the thing that I wonder about is oh. they're obviously going to shoot thirty threes. Like they're going to shoot thirty threes. They're going to. Uh, they made five against Purdue. Five of thirty. Five. The first of like, game of the year. And. And by the way, Purdue made like 15, which is un, like also unrealistic. But the point, though, is they obviously bullied them. They missed a lot of shots. They tried to do uh, their, <laughs> they tried to do Bucky Ball, and Bucky Ball didn't work against a big ass team who's bigger and stronger and meaner. And I'm hoping that KU can be the bigger, stronger, meaner team here too. 
And Buckyball th- is. I know Buc- what Buckyball is, but you have to tell. Nick yeah, doesn't so, know. Yeah, we. I know too, but will you explain it for Kevin? <laughs> yeah. yeah, or for the <laughs> listeners, because I do know what it is as well. <laughs> okay. Well, they call it Buckyball. Bucky McMillan is the coach, right? He's the coach of, 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 the, of the Bulldogs. And as far as I can tell, like, again, this is, this is in the last couple hours learning. Don't like, I'm not like an authority on Buckyball. But Buckyball is press like hell, run like hell, shoot like crazy. Like, that's basically all that I've gathered about Bucky Trivia. Ball. Do you know who Bucky replaced? Scott Paget, former Kansas Jayhawk. Hmm. Wow. Related to David Paget? I just glitched. <laughs> wrong Paget. I'm totally wrong. <laughs> I was like, I remember. <laughs> you remember no. David Paget? <laughs> Scott Paget played in the NBA. He played in the NBA. I'm very wrong. He played for the Houston Rockets. Sorry. It's fine. We'll claim him. We'll claim him. We'll claim him. It's cool. I actually love Scott Padgett on the Rockets, too. That's my worst moment on the podcast. Uh, Scott Uh Padgett scored 29 and 10 against Kansas in the second round of the NCAA tournament for Kentucky. Way to bring it home. Way to bring it home there. Wow. All right. There's a connection. Hey, can I say something about Buckyball? (laughs) It it just... That style that you just described, it sounds like one of those like badass sixth grade teams that you play against that just poke mm-hmm. the ball out. They run around like crazy. Their point guard is probably 5'8", just like Sanford's. If we lose to a badass sixth grade team, I'm going to I'm going to fucking lose it. Can we I'm sorry, can we cuss? I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> yes. yes, you can cuss. Cuz that it's style, fine. we've all seen it in those youth games. It's demoralizing. Uh, if we go down like that to a bunch of people poking the ball out from behind, but you, just let's talk you know, about another game. And you know, but you know why teams play like that? It's because, yeah, I don't want to go as far as to call it like a gimmicky style, <laughs> but it is gimmicky in nature. In that we know our du- you, we know you have better dudes than we do, so we have to play this high variance style of play. To be able to compete. And when we're on, we're going to look really fucking good. But when we're not, then our warts start to show. They're so little. They're babies. They're, they are 349th in average height. Have we talked about this? They're yeah. Little t- they're little <laughs> it's very funny. They're little miniatures just running around. And that's, that's the thing. Like, that's buckyball. That's that buckyball. is buckyball. You know, <laughs> the thi- like, it makes sense that they're going to get extra possessions and just shoot a ton of threes from steel. It's like pretty... Pretty smart. They're, they've really struggled against zone this year, by the way. And Great. if you're going to play a team with, that can stretch KU, uh, I see you're saying Bill Self would never do that. Certainly not against Sanford. But, like, if they're going to throw out five dudes shooting and try to get KU in trouble in pick and roll, like everyone has, and they run a lot of pick and roll, by the way, I looked, like a lot. Zone is not the worst idea in, the con- in like, the history I know. It's going to happen at some point this tournament if KU wins three games, like, gets to the Sweet 16. There will be zone. Can we talk about how they put up 134 points on one team this year? Oh, gosh. Who was that? <laughs> VMI? Yeah, well, they, Kevin, put up, they put up 120. You can't say that, right? Yeah, you can. Why not? I don't know. I want to see KJ kick one of these guys. <laughs> I like do. Hunting a football. Like, yeah. Poof. Yeah. Yeah. I do. It's not bad. I think I think that would set the tone. I don't know what would happen to him, but I do think show them how small they are. Just a little. <laughs> I will say I just want to note that that team that Samford scored 134 points on VMI, they went 4 and 28 this year. Oh yeah, don't get don't get it twisted. They're bad. The team they scored 128 on is NR on Ken Palm. So I don't even know what that means. But not real. Ranked. Not real. <laughs> not real. <laughs> Joke's on me. Um, yeah, they're not real. They don't count. Uh, they, what about the rest? Okay. Several times. Because it's like, I, I feel like we do this in the NCAA tournament. We look at this team. We say, oh, they're good at this. They do this. They do this. They do. But it's like, they're, they're bad at some stuff, too. They're really small. They're Hunters should eat. 
it has to be a massive hunter game, right? The huge hunter thing. Game. He has two arms. And you mm-hmm. know what? I think I've. This is now the fourth player I've said this about during this for this matchup. But <laughs> Furphy <laughs> needs to have a big game. <laughs> Furphy needs to go. You're a, you're a lottery pick, okay? You're a future first round pick playing against a bunch of fourth graders, like. It's Do you think up. our baby boy from Australia has ever seen a defense like Buckyball? Or probably dead, not. Maybe? Defense? Not since sixth grade. <laughs> uh, isn't the guy? Isn't their main player uh, that a core guy? He's he's from Australia. Yeah, what? they probably have some Aussie beef. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me look into this. Let me they look into this. Fifty percent on their two point plays. Like they're, we're going to have so many. Layups. Like if we don't miss bunnies, we win the game. That's my. T- and they oh, turned over a lot, great. so I feel like it could be a big transition game too. It it could be a lot of running and transition. And there, there's your furphy game. There's your furphy game. He's Just a lot gosh. of wide open finger rolls. If That's Kevin McCuller has a wide open Cock layup, back yams. oh, I want like McCuller to pass the wide open layup because he's more prone to like botching it and just give it to Furphy or El Marco to do one of those cool dunk things. I like that. Timberlake. Yeah, more dunks. Throw it off the mm. back for KJ as he kicks a guy on no. the way up. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That'd be, a, that'd be an efficient way to do it. Make it look <laughs> like an accident. It was on accident. Mac. <laughs> you see the vision? Will the Salt Lake altitude impact? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. I'm with the bucky ball. Like, I, know, talk, I know. We're I know. I know. We're not playing in Nepal. Come I know. on. <laughs> I know. Altitude came up four times in the press of Bill Self. I was like, what are we doing? What? What are we talking about? Altitude. What are we? Like, the whole team is going to be at oxygen masks on the sideline the entire they're game. They're all vomiting. Nobody Fun. can even take the floor. Salt Lake City altitude is not that high. It's like Denver. Nah. All right. They they'll 52, be fine. 80. No, it. This is forty-two. <laughs> that make a thousand feet makes a difference. That's I know altitude, for you, Nick. Okay. Nick if is high altitude uh, as why mm. KU is going to win or not win. I'm out. Like I'm out. <laughs> I'm so done with altitude. All right. Um, yeah. Cause wait, hold on. Where's Stanford located guys. I'm sure they're located Alabama. at crazy altitude. Alabama. They're like in Alabama. It's not no altitude. Can we, can we do Gonzaga? Oh, Alabama. Yeah. Make because I want to circle back. We, yeah. Because I want to circle back at the very end and get predictions on this game. So, if KU is to move on, they're going to play either Gonzaga or McNeese State. And once again, I'm kind of in the same boat as I am with Samford, where it's just kind of like, you can beat those guys. We talked about this last week, Mike. Like, what is reasonable expectation? What would be considered a success? And I think we both settled on the fact that if they make it to the second week into the tournament, this will, all things considered, have been a successful season. Yeah, I know you were preseason number one, but like the way this, way is, this season's gone, you make it to the second weekend, I think we're going to be pretty happy with that. I I feel like KU's got a damn good shot of making that happen. Who's taking and I'm it? being met with absolutely Technical difficulties. Z- you didn't know con- that McNeese State's coach was Will Wade, so like you got to still process that. That's on did me. You, yeah. Jayhawk talk, Mac. Yeah. Did you know that? I definitely knew that. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, well, don't make me feel dumb about it. It's All right, so Gonzaga, <laughs> you know what bums me out? You should feel dumb about it. I, but this year, I was like, this is going to be the Gonzaga year. Like, they're going to have the pressure off the Bill Self thing where, like, kind of his worst teams go further. I, I was convinced, and now I'm like, no, nah, Gonzaga sucks. They've sucked all year. No, they stink. They suck. They're going to they, lose. McNeese. They've been playing really well, like, the last two months, by the way. But I love McNeese. That was the team I wanted KU to avoid in the first round. Second round is fine. What are you going to do? Like, you'll take Got to play somebody. In the second. Yeah. McNeese is kind of like uh, Sanford, like on steroids a little bit. Not with the pressing, but they just like shoot a bunch of threes, <laughs> rebound, like play pretty good offense. They're slow. Also very short. They're, sh- uh, they're very short. They play slow. They're really efficient, shoot a lot of threes. They turn get a ton of steals pressure defense so like we've already done it once now we have slow slow sanford slow sanford slow bucky ball <laughs> and uh the other one's gonzaga and like i will say they will have a home court advantage like they're gonna have fans in salt lake those those fans travel i've seen it i've seen it 
I, I just I think that in this season where you're not entering the tournament where, like, people are picking Kansas to go to the Final Four. You're not overlooking first-round opponents. You're not overlooking second-round opponents. I feel like the attitude of this team is going to be of a, of a team that has something to prove every single game that they're playing. And I mean, I hope if they just go out and look the exact same way they looked versus Cincinnati last week in Kansas City, then it's like, okay, well, right. I guess we knew who this team was going to be. But I just feel like I'm just in. I'm just in. All around. There's pretty much nothing you can... What? You're in? I'm so in on this team. Really? I'm the most in I've been on this team all year. And, yeah. And the reason for that is just pure reset button? Like, just reset yeah, button? Pure, p- yep, yep. Pure what? reset button. I get that. Uh, us tight against circle. the world. Just us against circle. the world. Nobody believes in us. And tell you what, 2012, not one of Bill Self's best teams. What'd they do? Final Four. Where's same thing in 2018. Team? Same thing in 2022. They play their best when everyone's counting it's them true. out. It's Everyone is counting them out. Those well, were... resume. Come on, you didn't think you didn't you didn't think they were going to the final four in two thousand twenty two. I did not. Nor did I in two thousand twelve. I uh, mean, it's time. Look, I, I'm with you on the reset button. Like, if there's ever been a Bill Self team that needs a reset, it's this one. Like, just needs a pure, just click. All right, nothing else matters now. Click. Reset button. So if if you want to be all in, like that is basically the only reason I will allow the all in. <laughs> it's just the reset button. That's it. That's all I got. But I, don't, I mean, I don't hate that. it is very, very like, okay, they have oh. beaten one, two, and four in the country or whatever. Like three of the four one seeds they've beaten. Uh, Gonzaga, th- the most important thing, not ultra athletic. Dude, that's what KU wanted to avoid. They're I'm not. A, they play pretty good interior defense, though. That's not great. But whatever. Like, think about think about who who we got though, and just let's just look at the at just the regional itself. Uh, Purdue beatable. We know they're beatable. They are yeah. not, and they've yeah. lost to a thirteen, a fourteen, and a fifteen seed like the last three years or whatever. Literally, right? There's a 13, 15, 16, and 12, something, whatever it is. It's a bunch. Really high seats. And then you got Tennessee, who it's like the close your eyes, you wake up the morning after the final four. It's like, do you see Rick Barnes holding, holding the net around his net? Like, is he, do you see Rick Barnes there, like with the, with the regional trophy? I just can't see that. I'm just, I cannot do it. And then, like, Creighton, they've had their lumps all, all year, too. Like, I've just, talk to me about who's going to, scare you in this regional i think KU got a great draw all in but that is that's assuming they could get out of the first weekend which hey reset button it's time because yeah, if not uh, now, everything then, you just said if not now then right after the tournament we're gonna hit the reset button <laughs> uh with the entire roster so <laughs> i think that might be happening regardless reset. of what happens yeah. Yeah. um i think everything you just said mac I love calling you Mac, by the way. I, know, I think I everything like you just too. said. I can tell. I think everything you just said is indicative of college basketball in general. And I think I needed to see the bracket for it to really be hammered home to me. Everybody's been saying it all year. Like, oh, there's only a couple great teams. Like, there were only two or three teams that I really wanted KU to avoid in terms of a buzzsaw, like Houston, like uh, UConn. Yep. Even Iowa State, I would throw into that. But. None of the teams, none of those buzzsaw teams are in the Midwest. Every single one of those teams is gettable. And it's not even about, will Kansas beat that team? It's like, no, will, they, will Purdue make it to the, to the Elite Eight? Or like, will Purdue make it to the point where KU would be playing them? Or which I guess would be the Sweet 16. Like, they could fall in the first weekend as well. So, I don't know. There's not, I, I just feel like there's just not a big bad wolf that I'm supposed to be terrified of. I mean... All right, so we're in. So Kansas is going to the Final Four. No, uh, Nick. <laughs> the funny Nick, thing, Mike about, like, is ha- Mike is so far out on the Hawks. It is unbelievable, and you haven't said it, but I just can feel it. You're well, out. You're done with this team. I'm just kind of laughing at like the Sanford. I'm like, hey, you want a team that's not going to beat them and getting extra possessions and shooting threes, and it's like exactly what what popped up. Uh, am I out on the team? Like. What do you think, Nick Timberlake? Do you see Nick Timberlake playing in Phoenix in the Final Four? 
Reset. Nick, like, he will be out home against Sanford. Like, he will be in his comfort zone. Whoa. 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 A lot of head nodding. Hold a lot on. of head nodding going Hold on in the on. chat right now. He's like, Timmy this is oh, going to yeah, be fine. I'm back in the kitchen. Here we He's go. like, I'm more athletic than everyone and taller than everyone again. <laughs> uh, okay, so Timberlake's going to get hot. That's cool. And if McNeese State beats Gonzaga, then it's another Timby game, or it's just, you know, Gonzaga, which, like, I love this take. It's, no, it's this genius. is setting up really well. Daddy's home. Johnson, hey. Johnson, Timberlake. <laughs> Mid majors. Timby's here. <laughs> oh. I love this take. Oh, this he is looks good. Across the airport and sees that other team and goes, okay, I can take them. It's like that this scene in Waterboy where the kicker looks across and goes, there's my bitch. Yeah. Right? That's what, that was Timmy when he saw the bracket reveal. <laughs> Sanford. Yes. Yes. Uh, as for the buzz, all, I mean, do we want to talk Purdue a little more? Or is like, I do want to talk Purdue. All right. Kevin, I want you to talk Purdue. What is your, I want what's to your talk- vibe? I think I think we could bring Zach Eady back to where he belongs, which is like two years ago, he clearly hated playing basketball. And now he's having fun, he's winning awards, they're obviously super good. But I think I think playing against Hunter again, he's I don't know, I feel like we're gonna get soft body Eady. We're not gonna get this hard body Zach. He's gonna go back to I only play this sport because I'm freakishly tall. I hate this sport. I hate this so much. Everyone's I want to be a business analyst. Me. Just let me be a business analyst. I feel like I feel like we have a chance to do that to him, which is what's right. It's what it's what he deserves, frankly. <laughs> Full circle moment. That's it. That's I'm, the only hard hitting data I've really looked at is that. I'm blown away. I'm kind of I'm kind of with it though. I mean. So, okay, so Timberlake is back. Old Timberlake comes back against uh, the mid-majors, and old Hunter comes back when he sees his friend Edie, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm first-team All-American against him. And Edie is like, oh, shit, first-team All-American. You know, like, at least it won't be some dude dragging Hunter, like, out to the perimeter. Like, and Hunter doesn't foul. That's the good thing. The man has never committed a foul. Edie... Gets fouled so much. By the way, that blows my mind. Like, I watched more Purdue this week than I had. The fouls they call on him. Like, oh my, I see why Hunter was eating in the Big Ten. Like, they just aren't. They were. They, this guy gets every whistle ever. Zach Eady shot like 167 more free throws this year than Hunter did. Hunter shot like 103 free throws. It is insane. If I'm Hunter, I'm like, hmm. I don't know about the Big 12. I don't like... I don't like the, He's going to transfer back to the Big stat, 10. Hey, stat correction, guys. We actually have a stat correction from oh. something that was said early, earlier Beep. in the show. A, a while ago, I talked about how many free throws Zach Eady shot. He, <laughs> he shot 370. Jesus. 370 free throws to Hunter Dickinson's 103. Is it an us how problem? is that possible for how is that possible for two guys who play the exact same style of basketball? Is that a career number? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yes. It makes no sense. It makes Am no I... sense. And hunters and hunters' numbers were like, like he shot so many more free throws. What if... right last year at Michigan than he did this year? I, I don't get it. And what he's if... double teamed every time he touches it. Ernest Uday just comes in and beats Zach E.D. before we even get a chance. Oh, Dude. TCU. What if TCU just beats Zach E.D. before we even have, a, have the opportunity? What Ernest if? is his kryptonite. What? <laughs> People are talking. I heard it on the streets. He's like, Kansas, I got you. Sorry I left. Uh, don't sleep on Utah State either. Sleep on Utah State. They got they got a seven I feel like footer. you don't want us I feel like you don't want us to sleep on any team in the Midwest region, Mike. The Midwest is a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go. There no, we no, go. no, it's good. It is the the as like, the entirety of it is good. The little Kansas pod is not ideal. Outside of Gonzaga somehow. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. 
We don't care about the rest of the pod. Like, get out of the first week, and, and then we can worry no, about no, the I'm rest saying, of the draw. Because no, I'm saying the, the first weekend pod. Oh, you're saying the first the weekend Lake. pod is not ideal. Yeah. Who would, mm-hmm. Dude, this is how far Kansas has fallen. They, they got dealt three mid-majors in their first pod, and we're just like, tough draw. McNeese this... State, Samford, oh, boy. Hold on, hold on, this, hold is, on. this is the truest sign. That we have descended into poverty status this year. What is no. going on? This is the most mm-hmm. Kansas a thing a Kansas fan could do is fret over mid majors in the tournament. That is what Kansas does. Even though, even though the real threat this year is athleticism, I've said it fifty times. But the number one team I said I didn't want to see, and I stand by it, was McNeese in the first round, second round, whatever. Those guys are good. Will Wade is sick. He's gonna be. He could be like a Bill Self situation when he was at Illinois. Hey, Kevin, uh, Jayhawk Talk, Mech, would you be cool if KJ hires compare, Will Wade? Did you just compare Bill Self at Illinois to <laughs> yeah. Will Wade at McNeese State? In his first year. What are we They're doing? Identical. Basically the same. <laughs> in his first year. Yeah, I That's would how hire. good Will Wade is. Oops. I would hire Oh, you're Will. in? Oh, yeah, 100%. All right, cool. So in. Me too. So, the, the, the amount of hype that you're giving McNeese State and Sanford tonight is blowing my mind, Mike. I haven't hyped Like, you're Sanford talking about them much. like they're fucking juggernauts. Like, no one's been able to touch McNeese State all year. They've had Final Four written all over them. Mm. Well, they lost three games. Yeah. I mean, they've, they kind of <laughs> they haven't have, really been touched. <laughs> they've wrecked everyone they played. Like, really? wrecked everyone for a while. Oh, and yeah. Is, uh, to, to quote Kevin, uh, the Southland's a real grind show this year. I'm sure they're really battle-tested. I did going say Going up that against Incarnate year. Word and Nichols State. Not bad. Not bad. No, bad. No, bad. Bad. I want to be very Incarnate clear. Incarnate Word was D2 not very long ago, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real grind I stand show. By, I stand by McNeese. <laughs> I stand by McNeese. Okay. So All right, take your, take your take your glasses off. Stop doing the numbers thing. Don't don't look. Yeah, at seriously. Don't look at pace stats. Look at height. Look at Computers. old school height. <laughs> how tall are they versus how tall are we? You're like an old baseball stat. Like, what's his girlfriend look like? No, I'm can, on board with that. Like, seriously, can we touch the basket faster than like, they can? That's can the KJ question. kick one of them out of the arena at altitude? Because the altitude will help. Yes, that's a good point. All right. <laughs> um, I want to I want to wrap this up soon, but before we do, I want to kind of end with just I don't you don't have to give me like predictions of how you think the game's going to go, but I guess from a simple TLDR question, is Kansas winning their first game? Is Kansas making it to the second week into the tournament? Any who wants to be the hero to go first? No, well, Ke- okay, Kevin. Kevin T has already written in Sanford. I scratched <laughs> it out. Hold on, I scratched it out. I'm a little... You haven't written. He's like this guy shoots forty eight percent. Yeah, I'm working through some things. Let's just be one. I mean, I... yes, yes, we're gonna get out. We're gonna get out. We're gonna do it. We're getting out of the first weekend. <laughs> we're not gonna lose in an embarrassing fashion to sucks. sixth grade style. We're gonna do it. <laughs> As he says all of this with his eyes closed, trying to convince himself of what he's actually saying. Mm-hmm. I, I like mean, the, I like the reset button. Give me the. I'm, I'm all in on reset button. Here's, I mean, I I have a real question, Mech. Kansas is probably going to be a dog against Gonzaga in the second round. I hope so. Like, don't think you think? Gonna, and then our uh, our emotional hedging for that. Oh, I'm taking Kansas, and therefore, like how I would bet these games, how I'm thinking about it. So, already, bet. I. What'd you bet? I saw that eight and a half number. I was like, this is going to shrink. I'm on you, eight. And a half. You took Sanford eight and a half. Yeah, I'm hoping I find mm. a way to middle of this sucker. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's an emotional head slash middle opportunity. You're you've been the positive one the whole time. Emotional You're just going for value. It's, it, those are those are just donations. Oh, emotional heads. Donations emotional heads. to the winning fund. We it's all know how that works. Slash value. I didn't bet on the money line. All I took was the points. The, the you money know that line was the true hedge because it was plus three forty or something. I did not do that. 
So on KU's 2022 Whoa. run, Mech and I bet against KU every game as tradition. We Didn't, lost a lot of we money. We lost a ton of money <laughs> to win that title, like a lot. You bought us a championship. Yeah. We just like started once. We're like, guess we got to keep doing this. Doing it. And it worked. It did work. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It's that was unbelievable. Um, by the way, like I, I think Kansas gets out. Yeah, I'm pretty calm about it. Wow, look at there. He's I don't lying. Know. You're lying. <laughs> Come you can't lie in this situation. You have to tell us what you really believe. He just flips it. He's like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not taking <laughs> King to lose to Sanford. I'm just annoyed. Uh, no, they're too small. They're little people running around. And like, <laughs> That's right. and then I'll take, uh, I'm not taking King to lose to the Zags. So like, yeah, all right. King gets out. Okay. And you guys know where I stand. Like, I think it's going to be two blowouts en route to the Sweet 16. Do you when really? When they do those articles on, like, yeah, when they do, like, sporting news, is it's, like, something? reseeding the tournament after the first week, and KU's going to be number one. Is this a KU's going to have the most impressive like weekend. Feels like a bit. You're lying. Dude. No, I'm dead serious. Nick, I listened to your show last week when I'm pretty sure you <laughs> said because this team is too hashtag online. <laughs> They can't. They, you are so out on them, which I no. liked the take a lot because I could have a good take. Up. It was a great take. Uh, and now all of a sudden you're all in because the reset is real. Now, Mike talked about the reset before the Big 12 tournament. No, the reset oh, really happens now. And I, think the, and I think the I think the Cincinnati game, that was the final. Maybe straw. that's it. Maybe that's it. That was the that's the turning point. Got it. Yep, exactly. It was, we lost to, like, the worst team in the Big 12. Like, come on. Okay. I, it was ugly. Uh, if KU funny. makes the Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, whatever, like, if they go on a tourney run, are they treated as an underdog? KU fans will, will be treating it as an underdog story, by the way. Which no that's one else the will, real right? bit. That's the real bit. Nobody believed in us. We're just a bunch of plucky underdogs. We're this upstart team that's just trying to fight tooth and nail. We're n nothing given. Everything. Can you earned. believe the rest, this team? This team. The rest <laughs> of the collective college basketball fan will be like, oh, okay. It's like when Michigan State goes to the Final Four as a seven seed, or North Carolina as an eight seed. It's what's like, the okay. line on the McNeese game for KU? If KU plays McNeese, what's the line? Five and a half. Yeah. Okay. What is what's their isn't their line like five and a half this week against the Zags? Something like I think that. it's five and a half. It's around there. Kay's little. Yeah, five and a half is probably maybe four and a half. I'd say four and a half. These guys are pretty good. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. You hey, do we care? Do we care about the the tip off time? Does it affect us or the players or just doesn't mm. matter? I like it. I like the late because the longer it takes for that bone bruise, that extra six hours. <laughs> might that just one might just... more banana. You can have yeah. one more banana to heal the bruise. Yes. We don't know. If Kevin, <laughs> we don't know if Kevin's going to be good this tourney. He's good. He plays 40 minutes against a press. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. just dominates. Um, I like the late time mostly because I feel like there will be less overlap at that point. Like, and you're not worried about what games are like, is that the last game of the day? Second to last second. Yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. I, I don't like it. If it's an upset heavy day, that means they're going to sit around watching, watching teams get beat. I don't like them having to watch other, other games. And they're going to be like, Oh, we're going to lose two now. I think it'll make them tighter. <laughs> That's just yeah, what for they sure. say in the locker room. They go, they go, Timberlake goes, hey, coach. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Are we going to lose two now? <laughs> uh, I, it, I, it's a pretty good Timberlake impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's so dumb. He will try okay. to yam. He's going to be, they're all so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be so good. Or self's just like never going to play him again. He might have been done after since he. 
Yeah, I'll be really interested to see what the rotation looks like in this game. <laughs> it's going to be no five bench. dudes. All Play starters. 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like, is Timby getting any run? Is El Marco getting any run? Sure. Yeah, El Marco's sure. just working on behind the back passes all week. That's it. Not dribbling, shooting. <laughs> uh, this will be fun. What? This is going to be a weird. This is a weird tournament for KU specifically. Like they're a four seed. They feel like a nine seed. They're playing a bunch of mid majors in the first weekend, and we're all super nervous about it. So I mean, that's the season in a nutshell. I'm ready for the junk defense. Like, I'm serious. This is the perfect junk defense team. They cannot guard on the perimeter. Tom Crean is out here, like, just <laughs> shitting on Hunter Dickinson. Like, bad on ESPN about his... Called him a traffic cone. <laughs> you really? Like, I don't know, but okay, that's Crane. how I interpreted it. I Get know, but, like... <laughs> he has a job. <laughs> Get a coach and coaching. <laughs> I know. He's doing what we're doing. <laughs> Get, get a job related to your major, okay? <laughs> <laughs> What's your major, dude? <laughs> oh, man. This is fun. All right. Uh, um, okay. Kevin's, do you, you, have any, you have a final word before you go back to your families and your children? I have one word, and it is just I'm really glad. I know that they're a 12, but I am glad that Grand Canyon isn't our 13. Because I watched, I watched the beautiful, yeah, the late, the great Tyon Grant Foster do his thing. That guy would be out for blood. He'd have 15 rebounds from the wing, and just he would put something in Timbo's face on a drive. He is so fun to watch. I'm so glad he is on the opposite side, out west. We'll just see oh, him. Oh, I in the didn't title realize. Game. I didn't realize he's just absolutely killing he's it good. for Grand Canyon yeah, this year. Killing it. And they're good. I took him to go to Sweet the, 16. Really did. He's the I type of player we could use. <laughs> he's really, really good. Yeah, mm. I hypothetically did that. Yeah, he would be good. Player development's out, though. We've talked about this. Yeah, yeah no, if, they, if you're not around. good right away, if you're not good right away at Kansas now, you have to leave. Pretty much. Or do you? Go develop somewhere else. Looking at you, Omarco. I, I feel empowered after hearing Mech recite that over and over that they're tiny. They're teeny little guys. Little tiny. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.